Hey, you kids, tonight's show is a repeat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I'll be honest with you, that makes me feel very good. That nice, warm, friendly reception from a, an intelligent, handsome group of humans like yourselves. Um, I wasn't talking about you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, I like to think that I covered it up pretty well, but I had a, uh, ooh, what a horrible weekend. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I had to uh, put a citizen's arrest on some bikers who were ignoring a helmet law up there where I live in. <laughs> now, did you see this? Uh, Reuben Hurricane Carter, a man, former uh, boxer, uh, was incarcerated in uh, New Jersey, I believe, for 19 years. And then his conviction for murder, I guess, was, was overturned, right. something like that. Anyway, he's, he's out now. He's, he's out free walking around. And, and nobody knows exactly why, but the Weather Channel is, is tracking his movement up the East Coast. <laughs> we don't know exactly. Huh? And how about that royal couple, huh? <laughs> so they, uh, they had a, a press conference with Princess Di this morning. Is it Diana or Diane? It's Diana, is it not? Di it's Diane. <laughs> what is it, Steve? No, let me hear. What is it? No, I'll try it again. What is it? It's Princess... Oh, it's Diane. <laughs> uh, so anyway, they had a... Uh, they, by the way, Joan Collins got married. You're kidding. She, no, she got married? She married a guy uh, 38 years old, and she's whatever she is, and uh, friend, friends of the, the groom think that he was looking for a grandmother type. Oh, um, come on. Oh. oh, yeah, you're pretty offended. Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, Princess Diana, or oh, yeah. Diana, <laughs> is having a press conference, and they said, uh, do you have any questions about American culture? And she says, yeah, what's the deal on Jean Shallot? Oh, no. Is that it? Are we out? Oh, no, there must be one killer in there somewhere. Come on. Come on, Kevin. You're keeping her. No, where is it? Where is the big one that's just going to blow the roof off this place? Okay, apparently we don't. Did we get them all? Yeah, we got them all. Okay. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a great show here tonight. What do we do? We go right over here. Oh, here's our friend, Paul. Say hello to Paul. Paul, nice to see you. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you. Sid, how are you? Sid McGinnis. I'm glad to be back at work. I had a crazy weekend. I was looking through Family Circle magazine. I brought it, too, and it has, for some reason, a recipe for Frank Sinatra's birthday cake. Totally straight. So I, I spent the weekend gathering up the ingredients. I'll, I'll let you know how it comes out. Having trouble getting marzipan, though. Do you know where I can get a hold of some marzipan, David? No, no, I... I don't know anything about it. Yeah, well, I'll keep working on this. Ah, how, we, how about you, though? <clears throat> how was your weekend? I had a very nice weekend. A lovely dinner, a Saturday night. Yeah? At the new Prudhomme restaurant. Oh, you dined at the new Prudhomme restaurant? Yeah. You mean Paul Prudhomme? No, no, Don Prudhomme. I had the boulebaise prawns. Whoa. They what? Well, I screwed that up. I had the nitro-burning boulebaise. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Okay, now that one doesn't count because I made the mistake there. So that doesn't count in our little experiment. I'm going to do this joke every night until I hear somebody tell this on the street. So tonight's experiment doesn't, it was a bust. I, I tainted the experiment. I'm terribly sorry about it. Oh, God. Okay, are you ever going to well, explain, are you huh? going to explain who Don Prudhomme? Don Prudhomme is a world famous legendary drag uh, racer. Drag racing guy. Drag racing guy. That may make a difference uh, as far as people understand. Well, people know joke. who Don Prudhomme is. Oh, yeah. The everybody snake. Knows. Everybody knows. Remember Don the, the snake, snake and the mongoose? Tom McCune was the mongoose? I only know Mr. Norm's Gary Dyer from Chicago. Mm hmm. Is, is that, is, who's the Chi Town hustler? Is that, uh. uh I don't know. Carl Bonafetti? Yeah. Screaming Wild Man? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, see them shake hands with the devil as they roar through the gates of hell, those guys? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
So he's a race car driver. He's a race car driver, yeah. So in other words, you if you dine at his restaurant, you have a dish that might be named... Funny car veal. Might be. Yeah, exactly. See? It's hot in here. It's way too hot. Huh? No, it's not comfortable. The sports guys, for some reason, we turn the studio over to the sports guys on the weekends for NFL uh, 86, 85? 85 with our friend Bob Costas. And, uh, and uh, uh, it's too hot. It's too hot. The, the call has been put in. We'll, we'll just wait quietly until it cools off. Uh, okay, we've got to get to, to this because we have a huge show. You know who's on the show? William uh, Refrigerator Perry is here. Emmanuel Lewis. <clears throat> I'll save this. We'll, we'll save the top ten list. We'll get right to it because we've got a big, uh, a big show. Uh, we're going we're gonna to call the people in Australia. You know, uh, in Australia right now, in Perth, which is on the western coast of Australia, do we have a map of Australia anywhere? Oh, yeah. Thank you, right here. There it is. There it is. See, there's Perth way down there. That's the western coast. And uh, it's uh, in Australia now. It's about 25 minutes of 7. It's just uh, 6.35, 6.36. That's tomorrow morning. It's, it's this time, but it's Tuesday, tomorrow. And we have a hotel here. It's called the, the Merlin Perth. Right there, we have a brochure. Okay. And we have, uh, we have a guest list of people staying in the hotel. <coughs> and, and these people have left wake-up calls for... Actually, we're a, little, we're a little late getting to this. So we're... Uh, <laughs> We're going to call down there uh, it, in Australia and uh, wake some of these people up. The, the first person we're going to talk to is uh, Mr. Miller. He's staying, is that right, Mr. Miller? Is that the first one? I guess it is Mr. Miller. He, he's staying at the Merlin Hotel, and we'll call. Paul, do something while I dial this. It's a terribly long number here. Just a little uh, minute work there. Okay, thank you. So we'll call, we'll get the hotel operator, and we'll see if we can't uh, wake Mr. Miller. Boy, it's hot in here. How do those sports guys do it? What are they doing? Uh, working out in here or something? <laughs> Whew! Calling Perth, Australia. Take another shot of the clock, Hal. There we go. There's the first... Uh... Good morning, Merlin Perth Hotel. Yes, ma'am. Are you the hotel operator? Yes, I oh. am. What a great question on my part, huh? <laughs> It's the heat, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's, a, it's a drifter in the lobby just passing through. Hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is David Letterman. I'm calling from New York City. We're doing a television program right now, and uh, we want to wake up some of your guests who left a call for 6.30. Oh, yes, certainly. I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm sure. They... <laughs> okay, hold it. Okay, uh, ma'am, can we speak to Mr. Miller? Do you have a Mr. Miller staying with you? I understand he left a wake-up call for 6.30. Mr. Miller, uh, Mr. Just one minute, uh, Mr. Miller, is it 6.30 there now? No, no, you're a little bit late. It's 6.40. 6.40, all right. And, I'm uh, sure he won't mind. What's, what's the... Minute, please. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm going to wake this guy up. Mr. Miller, I can't tell you what room he's in, but uh, he's a guest at the hotel there, and she's putting us through. And I think we all know how painful that can be. <laughs> uh, Mr. Miller, my name is David Letterman. I'm calling from New York City. This is a television show. Can I put you on the air, please? Uh, I'm sorry, is this Mr. Miller? Uh, no, no, no. We, we want to wake you up. <laughs> is, Mr. Miller, can I talk to you on the air? This is a television program. Can I put your voice on the air? He hung up. He hung up. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Now we wait, we wait for the operator to come back? The operator will be right back. Operator will be with us in just a minute. Okay, Are you there, New York? Y yes, hello, ma'am. Could we speak to Mr. Yes. P hello, yes, ma'am. Mr. Miller? Yeah, yes, no. You have your wake-up call. Just one moment, please. Go ahead, please, New York. Hello. <laughs> hello, is Mr. Miller. My name is David Letterman. I'm calling from New York City. This is a television show. Can I put you on the air? Okay, well, having some uh, difficulties. York? Yes, we're having difficulty with the language, I think, ma'am. Uh, would you like us to go on to the next one? Yeah, who was that, Mr. Miller? 
No, Mr. Miller, you just called. Uh-huh. Like Mr. Mr. White? <laughs> now, let me talk to Mr. Page. Is there a Mr. Page there? Mr. Tony Page? Page, yes. Certainly, just one minute, please. All right. By, by the way, I think Mr. Miller had an important meeting around 8. How's the weather there this morning? Pardon? I say, how's the weather there this morning? Well, we usually have beautiful weather, but this morning is a little bit overcast. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We're going to have the maximum temperature 23 today. That's centigrade, isn't it? Oh, it's very nice. <laughs> Hello, is there uh, Mr. Page? Mr. Page, my name is uh, David Letterman. Uh, we're calling from a television show. Can I put you on the air, please? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Page. My name is David Letterman. Uh, we're doing a television show here in New York City. It's time to get up, sir. Time to get up. You have an important meeting this morning, and uh, can we put you on the air? Oh, wait, you'll talk to us. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Page, what are you doing there in Perth? <laughs> I'm over here on business. Uh, what kind of business? I'm in the leisure industry. In the what industry? In the leisure industry. Leisure industry. That's correct, yes. Yeah. What, what, what exactly does that encompass, the leisure industry? Uh, sports complexes. I am a uh, indoor gymnasiums. Well, you, squash centers. You, you know, you sound like you just got up. I beg your pardon? Uh, how come you're getting up so early this morning? <laughs> I, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> I wonder that myself sometimes. What? Your phone call, mainly. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear what you said. I said your phone call is one of the reasons. Oh, the phone call. <laughs> You've woken me up. Uh, all right, now, uh, are you sleeping alone there? Do you, is your wife with you, sir? No, no, I'm sleeping alone. Yeah. I was sleeping alone. It's the, uh, it's why the are you down under. Uh, okay, I tell you what, Mr. Uh, Page, uh, can you take the uh, telephone there to, uh, oh, do you have a hair dryer with you? Uh, what? A hair dryer? A hair dryer, yeah. Yes. Could you, could you, uh, test it for us? We'd just like to hear it. Make sure it's working. <laughs> you are jaggy. No, no. <laughs> just, just go to the, go to the, uh, uh, place where you have your luggage, get the hair dryer, plug it in and turn it on. It'll take a second. You gotta dry your hair anyway, right? Right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I'll play this game. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> uh, okay, we're waiting on Mr. Page, and it's now quarter of seven uh, local time in Australia. By the way, that time is centigrade. <laughs> uh, Mr. Page, hello. Waiting on him to get his uh, hair dryer, and then we'll be on with our show. We have a great show for you, don't we, Paul? Good show. Yep, this is dead air to a different time zone. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Page. My head dryer works, Turkey. What next? What? What? No. No, no, no. We we wanted you to play it near the phone so we could hear it. I'm sorry, but I have better things to do with my time than play games. <laughs> All right. Well, I I certainly appreciate you talking with us. How about could you sing the national anthem? <laughs> Just the, just the opening line or two. Nah. What is the Australian national anthem? I don't believe you. Uh, you won't do that for us? Have fun. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. out of bed next time. Yeah, okay. okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, well, he, there he goes now. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, what do we do? We'll just let him go. Uh, we'll try and get the uh, heat turned off here in a couple of minutes. Emmanuel Lewis is with us tonight. My next guest this evening is the star of a hit series on another network called uh, Webster. Many people do not realize this, but he is also idolized in Japan. A very nice young man, and I understand, I understand moments ago he was sound asleep in the green room, like most Americans this time of night. Please welcome Emmanuel Lewis. How you doing? Hello, good. Nice to have you here. You, now, you're from the New York City area, aren't you? Yes. You're, you're born where? In Brooklyn? Yes. How long ago did you move to California? Well, I, I actually live in, here in New York, but mm -hmm. I just go out in L.A. just to shoot lobster. Yeah. How, how often are you out there? 
very often. Uh, half, half of the year you're out there? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how did you get the job on Webster? Uh, I don't... Well, I think it was because of my Burger King commercial. Uh -huh. And uh, how did you get the Burger King commercial? Because of the commercial before that. <laughs> You're, you're not the guy who used to say, where's the beef, are you? No. <laughs> I will tell a lady. Yeah, it was a joke. I was just making a joke. Oh. <laughs> uh, and and uh, between New York and L.A., which do you prefer, New York or L.A.? New York. Is, yeah? <laughs> and and, and why, do, why do you prefer New York? There's no place like home. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and do you have a nice uh, uh, house in, in California? No, I live in a condo. Condominium? <laughs> well, well, you poor thing. Uh, uh, but don't you, don't you like the weather out there? It's always lovely. Yeah, but what's Christmas without any snow? Well, you come back here for the Christmas. I am. Yeah. Now, uh, what about, do you go to the ocean a lot out there? Uh, no. What do you do for fun when you're out there? Well, I go to the movies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, let's see, I go, I do, you know, just the, the normal things I do here. Mm -hmm. So it really is not much difference for you out there, but you prefer New York. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, what is the deal with you in Japan? How did you get to be so popular in Japan? Well, I was doing a Japanese commercial. For, for what? For Clarion. Clarion makes uh, audio components? Yes. Yeah, okay. And, uh, is that enough of a plug? Will I get something at the house now? All right, so you go to Japan, you're making the commercial. Yes, and then they liked it so much that they decided to do a movie. Mm -hmm. So we did a movie, and then we... You I, made a feature film in Japan? Yes. Yeah. What was that, that about? The Stammer. Mm hmm <laughs> And he, I was... I was on uh, directing the Stammer, because they were lost, and... Uh, matter of fact, we did it in Manhattan, yeah. <laughs> well, boy, you were lost then, weren't you? Uh, <laughs> Oh, they were lost. They okay. were lost, and I was directing Yeah, them. but now, but uh, I understand when you go to Japan, like you go to Tokyo, uh, yes. that you're mobbed. People mob you. Is that true? Yes, there was a big crowd of people, and a lady took my shoe, and I had to perform. <laughs> and my mom had to beg the lady to give me back my shoe so I could perform. Uh -huh. It looked very awkward if I had one shoe on and one shoe off. A, a woman ran up to you on the street, grabbed a shoe, and, and well, they was picking me up to go on stage. Cause I was oh, I see. To... I see. You, yeah, yeah. But but isn't there a doll that is popular in Japan that, yes. that resembles you? Well, yeah. There was like a story that behind it because the, there was a little doll that a soldier had gave the people, and they liked it so much. It's like they almost worshipped it. Mm -hmm. And so the, they, they, said, they thought it brought them luck, right? Yes. Yeah. And they said the doll looks like me. Mm -hmm. So anybody who saw me wanted to touch me and see if I'm for real. Yeah. <laughs> and, and some of the people there's like looking for the wind up or the, the battery pack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had that happen on occasion. People, people want to wind you up, and that can be uh, pretty uncomfortable. Uh, um, now, how's the show doing? How's uh, uh, how do you like working with Alex Karras? It's fun. Yeah. It's very much fun because we, we have a lot, a lot of nice people on the show. Catherine mm -hmm. Damon, mm -hmm. Eugene Roche. It's, they're very nice. Yeah. And uh, uh, is, uh, does, do you get along well with Alex Karras off screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and how long has the show been on the air? I think this is our third season. Third season. Do you, do you get tired of, uh, do you find a lot of weasels in show business? Yeah. <laughs> like agents? Do you have an agent? You must have a high-powered yes. agent. Yeah. Do you have a nice agent or a jerk? Yes. Nice. Really? And you're sure it's an agent? Yes. Uh, uh, but the, you, sh sh you don't mind all of that that goes on, the phoniness in show business and so forth? Well, you mind it, but then you can't do anything about it. Yeah, well, that's, so. that's certainly true. Uh, and, and what are you going to do with all your money? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. You buying uh, uh, real estate? I don't know. What about a car? Do you have, do you have your own car? No. You going to buy a car? Yes. When you're 16, you start to drive, you're going to buy a car? Yes. Well, now, what... what, what <laughs> Uh, what kind of car are you looking at? What do you have your eye on? Lincoln's. 
<laughs> but most of all, a Rolls Royce. A Rolls Royce, yeah. Well, that would be real nice. Yeah. And uh, would you be driving these cars? Or you get somebody to drive oh, them for yeah. you. Oh yeah. You be driving them? Yes. Yeah. Have you have you done any driving? No. Yeah. Yes. Um, the Malibu Malibu Grand Prix. Oh, the little uh, the yes. little miniature cars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty nice. So you having a good time here while you're home now for the holiday? Uh, yes. Okay. Let me let me see what we're doing here. We're doing a. Uh, okay. Listen. Uh, con continued success with the show. And uh, uh, did you meet uh, Mr. Perry? Yes. Yeah. A pretty impressive fella. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice to see you, Emmanuel. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. My next guest has been bringing uh, some fan excitement, some fan, some fun, has been bringing some fun and excitement back to the NFL this season. He tips the scales at 304 pounds. And as you're about to see on this videotape on October 21st against Green Bay, he became the heaviest man in NFL history to score a touchdown off a set play. The man is just plain big. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the undefeated Chicago Bears, please welcome William Refrigerator Perry. Thank you, uh, thank you for coming today. You, you played yesterday. Are you are you sore from the game? No, I'm not really sore. The, the, Detroit didn't give us that much trouble. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Big Shot. Uh, you're having a lot of fun, aren't you? Oh yes, I'm having great fun. You have any idea? It's a dumb question, but did you have any idea when you were uh, playing college ball that it was going to turn out like this? Your first year in professional football? Oh well, not at all. I, you know, I was playing behind uh, Dan Hampton and Steve McMichael, and I thought I'd probably get a little time playing, but. Yeah. Then after all this happened Monday night, it's, it's, everything just went wow. Yeah, that's a lot of fun for everybody. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, how old a guy are you? 22. You're, you're just a kid, aren't you? Oh. Uh, and how tall are you? 6'2". Six 6'2"? Two. Six two? I'm 6'2". Okay. Yeah. And, and what do you weigh? Is it... <laughs> right now. <laughs> is, it, is it actually 304? Three, about 3'2 three now. 302. Because uh, you played yesterday, worked a little off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the most you ever weighed? Well, I was a sophomore at Clemson. I, I weighed by around about 365, 370. 365 or 370? Yes. What, what's the, the, the uh, least amount that you've weighed, uh, right. other than birth? <laughs> <laughs> about two, uh, 285 my uh, freshman year coming two, in. 285. Yes. And do you feel comfortable or right, right around 300 pounds? Yes, I feel very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, now, do you come from a big family? You have a lot of brothers and sisters? Yes, I have eight brothers, kind of myself, and uh, four sisters. Uh -huh. And do we have any, any size like that in the uh, other members of the family? Our brother, uh, his name is Freddie. He's about 6'2", about 325. Mm -hmm, 325. <laughs> so he's, uh, he plays football also, I guess? Uh, he, play, he used to play semi-pro pro for uh, uh -huh. Augusta Eagles down in uh, South Carolina. Yeah. And, and uh, what, do you, what kind of stuff do you eat to maintain this weight? Well, it's, it's not mainly anything. I'm, what do you I'm, start up with breakfast? You roll out of bed. What time do you get up? Well, I don't, mainly I don't, I don't, I don't eat breakfast now. I just, I'm just mainly just get up and I just get ready to go practice and, mm -hmm. and just carry on my day. But you know, and just getting up, you put on a couple of pounds. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> all right. So, so the first meal you'd have would be what? It's probably be I, but, uh, my only meal would probably be dinner. Dinner. What Pro time do you have dinner? Probably around after practice sometime. Mm -hmm. So you only eat one meal a day? Yes. You're going to waste away to nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, all right, now, William, what do you have for your one meal? Well, let's have a salad, uh, maybe a little... <laughs> a salad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a tab, and I guess you go to bed then, right? No. Uh, well, a little, little steak. So, now hey, this. <laughs> so you, ha you have a steak. Steak, salad, uh, yeah. something to drink. Maybe a cookie or two, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now, William, when you want to go nuts, when you just want to go nuts, what do you eat? Well, I don't go nuts about food now. It's just, it's all in the past now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, what, I, I understand in high school one time, and I'm sorry, college, after a game, you had some beer after a game. Fine. Everybody enjoys a beer after a workout. Forty-eight cans of beer. Well, yeah, that, was, that was after a big win, uh, after, North, after North Carolina, after North Carolina win. 
48 cans of beer. Well, you was a freshman, you know, coming in college before. You know, you and your friends got together. Y'all probably drunk more than that. <laughs> Jeez, you know, me and my friends would split like an eight-pack, and we'd oh, okay. and, and we, we'd sleep through classes on Monday. Uh, uh, what, now, what, 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 was this one of the biggest thrills in your uh, in your uh, football career, catching a pass? Had you ever caught a pass before? No, that's my first time catching a pass uh, against you know against all, any team. Uh -huh. it, was, it was just fun. Yeah, was it uh, a great feeling? Oh, uh, it was it was great. How early in the week did you know you were going to uh, be a receiver? Uh, only on only on Friday. And what what was your reaction when uh, Mike Ditka told you? Well, he he told me, he said, "Big guy, get ready. You're gonna, you're gonna catch a pass. Can you do it? And and don't drop it." So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we practiced a couple of times during practice, and I caught two and dropped one. He said, "Don't don't let that one you be dropped in the game." So, yeah. I, we worked on it, uh, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, we have uh, we have some more videotape of uh, Mr. Perry here in action. Do you know what we're gonna look at? I guess this is this maybe is the pass, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, here we go. It's on the. Uh, uh, who is this against? Uh, Green Bay. Green Bay. All right. This is, there he is right there. And uh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you, you look very graceful. I mean, you look like a, a receiver. You don't, when people say that you're 300-some you're pounds, I think they have a different uh, image in their mind of what that might be. Well... Well, when people say a guy's 300 pounds, they're thinking, thinking of, of him as fat, uh, overweight, slow. <laughs> but I bring, I bring a, a different meaning, you know, to that. <laughs> and, uh, when I was, when Chicago drafted me, and I, you know, I got well, there down. Was, there was some, some heat in the beginning, wasn't there? They said that they might even wasted a draft pick on yeah, you. Yeah, well, well, you've proven them wrong. All uh, right, yes. Yeah, you're almost, you're almost live. That would be a word for you, wouldn't it? I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm just, I'm just you know, everything is going well. We're going to do a uh, station identification, and uh, can you hang around for a second? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll be right back. Uh, welcome back. Uh, uh, later, Jerry Seinfeld will be here, a very funny gentleman, and tomorrow, Pete Townsend, Marv Albert, and Stupid Petrix. That's tomorrow. Now, uh, do, you feel, do you feel some pressure that you have to live up to something now? That you've, uh, you run in for the touchdown, you caught a pass. Are you going to do any uh, kick returning? Well, I don't know. We what a coach Dicker, you know, has in mind. Yeah. Would you, would you, you mind returning a kick? Oh, not at all. I'll do it. And and what about uh, throwing a pass? Could you throw a pass? Uh, that that might be in the making. Yeah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an arm have you got? Pretty oh, good. Uh, like Roger Staubach. Really? Bullets? <laughs> <laughs> really? Just real. Uh... All right. We'll look for that. Now, you a actually, uh, what about uh, kicking punts? Well, I, I kick a little bit, uh, you know, field goals, play around with uh, Kevin Butler and Steve McMichael, your prices. Yeah. I kick, kick a little bit. You kicked a 55-yard uh, field goal in college, right? Yes, yeah, so that was me and Donald. Was Donald Ikwe Buke. He was down at uh, playing for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was playing around one day. That I, wasn't in the game, though? No, I just booty point. Yeah, that, <laughs> 55 <laughs> yards, dead on the money? Oh, yes, straight yeah. through. And are, are, you, uh, are you getting a lot of offers and people interested in you for endorsements and stuff now? Yes, it's, it's coming in. My agent is handling, is handling all that on, on his part. Any, so. any good? stuff? Uh, Pontiac, McDonald's, uh, uh -huh. Coca-Cola, uh, fr uh, Fridge, uh, GE, Amana. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it goes on. <laughs> uh, I understand in Japan people actually worship you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, uh, I, heard that joke, yeah, I, heard, I heard that before. Yeah. I have an idea. Do you have a second before we leave? Yes. Let's, let's go in here to the green room. I have, I have just okay. gonna, uh, for a second. We'll, uh, I think this might be interesting. Now you're, you say you're 6'2", yes. and you weigh what? 302. 302. All right, come on in here. We'll be right back. How do you do? Nice to see you. Are you people with the show? Yeah. Uh, I bet you are. Uh, here's, the, here's the green room. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Perry. This is where all of the, uh, the guests stay. This is uh, Emmanuel Lewis. There's uh, William Refrigerator Perry. Hi. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry is going to be on the show a little bit later now. I don't know. Excuse me. Can you turn around right like that? And Jerry, stand right next to him. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see the difference? <laughs> Look at that. He's, a, he's an easy, like, four inches taller. What do you weigh, Jerry? 145. 145, and you weigh, like, 304. Yes. It's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, God, that's amazing. Thank you very much, Jerry. Okay, thank, thank you. Nice seeing you. We'll see you a little bit thank later. You. And uh, are we all done here? Uh, William, thank you very much. Have a great season. And, and maybe you're going to the Super Bowl, huh? Right, all the way. Yeah, all right. Thanks for coming by. Right, thank you. Nice meeting you. Uh, we'll, we'll be right back, folks. Okay. See, we, we thought the obvious thing to do would be to compare him to Emmanuel Lewis. Instead, we compared him to Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Did you, you understood that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. <laughs>
It was, yeah, it was a twist. Acted. It was a switch. It was a, <laughs> just a little switch there for you. Hope you enjoyed it at home. <laughs> My next guest is a terrific comedian. You just saw him in the green room there where we compared his size to the size of William Refrigerator Perry instead of comparing him to the size of Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> Uh, he's been on this program several times, and it's always a pleasure to welcome him back. He opens this Wednesday night in Minneapolis at the Comedy Gallery. Please say hello to a very funny gentleman, Mr. Jerry Seinfeld. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I feel like kind of a crisper next to that guy. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk about tonight was uh, some of the strange outfits that you find yourself in as you go through life, because I was at this uh, wedding a couple of months ago and I had to rent the tuxedo, which is certainly, I think, one of the moments in life when you feel you're really moving up when you start renting clothes. Uh, there's, to me, there's nothing like wearing an outfit that's already been worn by 80 different high school kids on the most exciting night their glands have ever dreamed of. Went to put my hands in the pockets, I'll think I'll just leave them outside. You know, I had the keys in one hand, the wallet in the other, I'm trying to dance with them. <laughs> I had those tuxedo rental shoes, you know those ones with the nuclear shine on them there? You go out on a sunny day, if you angle them right, you can kill bugs. Yeah, catch it just right. I couldn't believe the groom was married and rented shoes. I don't know, to me that's... I mean, you're making a commitment for a lifetime, your shoes have to be back by 5.30. I mean, it's like going bowling if you rent the shoes. I don't think I'd want to be up at the altar with a big eight and a half on the back of my heel. <laughs> Take this woman and alley five. But I was, uh, I was best man at the wedding, which I liked. That's a pretty good title. I don't know who thought of that. I like that. Best, what more do you want? I mean, I think we ought to have like the groom and a pretty good man. You know, I think that would cover it. Quite a guy, be a nice ceremony. Groom, quite a guy. I mean, if I'm the best man, why is she marrying him? <laughs> but uh, let's see, what other outfits? I was a Cub Scout. <clears throat> I think you can probably tell that about me. Once you've been through the Cubs, I don't think a man is ever really the same. <laughs> Not really. Any ex-Cubs here? Guys, uh, anybody still go to the meetings? Yeah, tough to stay with it after college, isn't it? <laughs> that hat gets pretty tight. But <laughs> I had that out. You remember the outfit? You had the blue shirt, the blue pants, the blue cap, the blue yellow button on the top, the yellow neckerchief, and this giant chunk of metal that was... I don't know why it had to be so big. I mean, somebody walks by with a magnet. You go, hey, hey, hey. You take it easy. I'm trying to get to a meeting. And you don't make it to a lot of meetings, you know. You get the outfit set up, you go outside, get beat up, come back, put your regular clothes on. That's why we had to form packs to survive. <laughs> we were dropping like flies in that outfit. And getting that hat stolen, boy. You go out in the schoolyard, you got that hat on. Remember kids with a hat? Anybody's got a hat, forget it. The hat, you just go, just, hey, come on, you guys. Come on. Just, would you quit it, you know, an hour in the lunch? Quit it. That's a, <laughs> you ever quit it? Quit it was a big line when you were a kid. You, remember, you never get much use out of that as an adult. You get stopped by a cop, just quit it. <laughs> just turn off the siren and quit it. <laughs> but that's why Cub Scouts, I think, are taught to camp in the wilderness. I'm sure if we had normal clothes, we'd check into a hotel like anybody else. In that outfit, the woods is where you want to be. But, uh, let's see, uh, Halloween, a couple weeks ago. Another situation there, you gotta dress up kind of strange. My, I, I thought would be my best Halloween would be the one where I got the Superman Halloween costume. I finally got the one, the cardboard box, the cellophane top, the mask included. You remember those? Rubber band lasts about 10 seconds on that mask. You go to your first house, trick or it's broken. Hold it. <laughs> but the truth of this story is, uh, my mother made me wear my winter coat over the costume that year because it was cold. So I had the winter coat on with the red nylon pants sticking out the bottom. Not exactly the superhero look I was going for, you know? I don't think Superman ever said to Lois Lane, is it chilly? Should I take a light jacket, you think?
Got to leap that building in a single bound. I don't want to get a chill. <laughs> so I throw it as it is. But uh, <laughs> trick-or-treating is not as much fun as you think it's going to be when you start out. You go out there, and by the end of that night, you get a little put out. I don't know if you remember. You're walking around. It gets pretty tiring. Every house, the same questions. Lady comes to the door. What are you supposed to be? I'm supposed to be done by now. Can we just move it along here with the three musketeers? I got eight houses to hit on this block, lady. I got eggs, water balloons to throw. I'm trying to get off my feet by 11. But I give you that... They give you that paper bag twisted on the top. You know, that's going to be some crap candy. I mean, they don't even want you to see it as they're putting it in the bag. You know, just... What is that? Candy corn? Do me a favor, you keep it. Yeah. I got a silo of candy corn at my house. Thank you very much. Jerry Seinfeld. Very nice. Thanks. You're always very, very funny. Just trying to be. Yeah. Well, you're doing a swell <laughs> job. Now, when you, when you, uh, you spend most of your time working in clubs and stuff? Yeah, mostly clubs. What kind of, what kind of people do you work with when you do Well, that? they'll get a guy, you know, they'll get like a local comic. Sometimes we'll open the show or they get uh, magicians sometimes. I was working with a magician. That's, uh, I don't know, they got a lot of birds in the dressing room, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. A lot of times, I don't know, it's just... The magic act, I don't know, to me a magic act is really, it's a, it's a humiliating thing to watch. I mean, it's, you know, here's a quarter, now it's gone, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the quarter comes back, you're an idiot, thank you, good night. And you never really, you don't know what you want. I always wonder if those new birds that, you know, I don't know where they keep those birds, but, uh, oh, the birds, and maybe this... I don't know. New ones waiting around, the old ones tell them, just flap around, look surprised, you'll be all right. You know. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you get a sense of any, uh, anything important going on uh, across the country that we ought to know about? Trends, big trends. Meet a lot of people, you, you, yeah, a lot of issues yeah. that are on people's minds? Anything? It's just little things. You know, people are obsessed with little things. Like everybody's sure. ripping up their carbons now. This is like a very hip thing. The that, credit you know, card carbon. Yeah, the yeah. Excuse me, waitress, the carbon. Thank you. Uh, I've got the carbon now, you know, and they rip it like this yeah. is this is a big crime stopper. You know, you rip the carbon from one into four pieces, so when the criminal gets that, well, he can't make head or tail out of it, you know. You're out of the deserted warehouse on the edge of town. I give up, Louie. I've tried every combination. Uh, so uh, you're doing real well. I'm yeah. sorry. What were you gonna say? No, that's just the trend. Yeah, yeah. You doing well? You enjoying your uh, success? Yeah. I like the work. You know, I like uh, being a comedian. The money, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I was thinking the other day about money, if it makes as big a difference. I mean, you work so hard to get money, and you think... Well, I, I remember when I was in college, I had, like, a rented television set, and I used to watch movies, and I would record albums. I couldn't even afford to buy them. Mm -hmm. And then you get, you know, you get the cable, and you get the VCR and all that. So now I'm, I'm renting movies. I'm taping television, and I'm watching music, so it's just a lot of money to switch the verbs around, it seems, you know. <laughs> uh, is, is there anything we need to mention? Oh, oh, you're oh, be oh you know, I'm doing, or... no, I'm doing the Caroline's uh, uh, New Year's, the big New Year's week. I, I got that gig, so that's a good thing. And, uh, really? I'm doing that, yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing? That's a good thing. New Year's Eve here in New York at Caroline's? Well, it's a gig. I mean, I'm working. Oh. You know. well, well, they get a, the fun thing is not only do they get noisemakers, there will be pellet guns also. <laughs> so, you know, it'll really be fun for the people that show up. Uh, well, good luck to you. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, have a nice New Year. Nice to see you again. Thanks, Jerry, come you back too. anytime, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll be back.